Hi, I'm Robert Mahar. I run the online children's emporium mahardrygoods.com that specializes in vintage and artisan crafted goods for children. I also am a blogger at Junior Society, a weekday blog that focuses on kitty culture and design. So I've been busy crafting and I want to show you four projects that I've been working on. I have been styling baby showers recently and looking to vintage themes and color palettes for inspiration. And of course a character that comes up over and over again is the baby delivering stork. Uh, looking at German toys for inspiration, I made these little party favors, very simply put together from basic shapes that you can find at the craft store, drilled with a Dremel on a press, uh, put together on dowels, painted with acrylic paints. The standalone guy looks really great as a place card holder. You can take a little uh, streamer of vellum or white paper with the guest's name for their place at the table. They also look really smart when they're on top of uh, favor boxes. Uh, of course, they can hold candy or mints at the party table, but the great thing with these is they'll also transition really nicely into uh, the nursery on the nursery shelf uh, as a souvenir of the day, but also perhaps to hold memorabilia from the baby's first year. So the um, second craft, which actually coordinates, is a centerpiece, and uh, I was looking at vintage crepe paper dolls uh, as some inspiration for this, and also, um, in all honesty, the logo for the famed New York night spot, the Stork Club, uh, gave me the idea. I've taken styrofoam balls, wrapped them really tightly in standard issue crepe paper streamers. It gives a really great effect. It almost looks like spun cotton. The feathers are fringed in folded paper. The neck, beak, and legs are um, just wrapped bamboo skewers. Looks nicely, even just displayed in the uh, crepe paper rolls, but of course you can stick it um, into a low-lying vase of flowers or moss. Um, also would look great standalone on a cake. So uh, this guy was just started this morning. When he's finished, he's going to have two smiling eyes and a little black top hat to uh, finish him off. And the third craft I want to show you is my take on the uh, classic clothespin doll. This is a craft that's been around for forever. Uh, some recent improvements, though, uh, that they've come up with are the little round base, which you can use as the feet and to make your character stand up, and also the little ball heads that fits on top. Gives it a really cartoonish appeal, very sweet. You can see that I've taken um, wooden beads and used them as hair elements. The uh, clothing is just, these are uh, quilting fabric scraps uh, cut into a circle, a uh, little running stitch to draw it up, a uh, drawstring around the neck, uh, painted the leggings on them. This little girl even has bloomers. This is a craft that's easily tackled by children. It's a lot of fun. The arms are um, just uh, floral wire that's been wrapped with embroidery thread to give it a little bit softer feel. Um, very fun for kids and one that can be um, done with uh, minimal supervision. And then the fourth craft I want to show you is uh, one that is uh, inspired by the Red Hill Sock Monkey, which of course has been um, a children's classic for years. What I've done is I've taken a white pair of athletic socks and created a sock skeleton. Super lanky arms and legs. Uh, this guy has ribs created from black embroidery floss, also used for a smile and uh, double button eyes. His tush actually is the uh, heel of the sock, which uh, helps him to stand up and makes him a great Halloween decoration or a gift for some lucky kid. So uh, thank you so much for allowing me to share these with you. Of course, if you have any questions, you can contact me at robert at mahardrygoods.com. Thank you so much.